Hey guys, Nick here with another Nick's Collectibles, uh, who we're going to be looking at today's X Trans Bots Master Series, Aegis. Um, this is not exactly a new figure, this is a new colorization on the same figure. He is meant to be more cartoon accurate, which means the blurs are a little bit there, a little bit more brighter, and a little bit more sky blue, and a lot of the colorizations meet the actual cartoon more accurately. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take a look at him, we're going to transform him, we're going to see what kind of accessories and everything like that he has, and hopefully have a good time doing it. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you have here is just the front of the box. This is very similar to Neptune and the other ones in this line. Uh, it's very well detailed. It's got a good depiction of the actual character. It's got the X-Trans bots logo on it, and it's got Aegis here written on the side. Uh, over here on this side of the box on it, which is kind of difficult to read in this lighting, it says, Be not afraid of going slow, be afraid of standing still, which apparently is the motto for Aegis. Um, if you turn him around to the back, you can see he's got the, uh, the card for that he's a defensive strategist. It's got his power card reading on it, very much in keeping with the 1980s Transformers line. Now, if we go ahead and flip him over like this, you're going to see it's got the same logo, be not afraid of going slow, be only afraid of standing still. Basically mean always push forward, don't sit around, rest on your laurels. The bottom of the box says really nothing of note. The top of the box really has nothing of note. So let's go ahead and get into opening up the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach over here and pop this open. Lay him down on his side and slide this straight out. Go ahead and put this off to the side. So here he is in his box. Let's go ahead and pull him out. And there he is. So the first thing you'll notice is he looks very, very much like the original Trailblazer on it. The colorizations, the gray, everything like that, all look very similar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my angle a little bit and zoom in so you guys can get a good look. You can see he's got turbo four wheel drive on here. If you turn them around on the front, you can see the front kind of grill here. You can see the windshield. You can already tell that the colorization has pretty much been changed from the original figure where that would have been more clear. If you move them around to this side, you can see he's very similar installing on that way. It doesn't have the four-wheel drive. It's got good detailing here where you can actually see the uh, door handle. If you turn them around on the back, you can actually see where this door would lift up and then these would open up to the side. Overall, I think presentation wise, as far as his vehicle form, he looks absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and set him over here just a little bit and bring out his accessories. So he has a pretty wide array of accessories. Um, these things range from the bizarre to the interesting to all the way in between. Um, I may have to break some of them out of the plastic, but I'll try to do it like this. My apologies. You can see he has a slightly different face play here where it looks like he can like do like a smile. Um, he has like a little stump thing here that allows him to have a picnic. He's got like a log that he can put something on as well. You can see he's got the more toy accurate face. He has a, another blaster hand here. He has his little triple blaster here. Um, if we flip this around, you can see he's got another face here that looks like it's just closed and he's got another face right here that looks like he's kind of angry on it. You can also see if you look at him from this angle that he's got a satellite dish and there's a couple of other accessories. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a closer look at him overall and we're going to get him transformed. We'll go through that process and then I'll show you what he looks like in his robot mode as well. So stick with me guys. This one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, guys, um, before we actually get too far into the transformation and things of that nature on it, I thought I'd show you some of the accessories kind of out of their packaging on it. Here you can kind of see the log that's here. That's where, like, um, Spike and all them can kind of sit. 
here's a rock where one of the other ones can sit. And this, even though it's kind of hard to see, I'll pick it up and move it a little closer. Uh, you can see it's got some like cups and a teapot, things like that. Uh, the stone is a little easier to see if I kind of pick it up in my hand. Um, it's a couple of kind of neat little accessories that you can see um, just a little bit better out of the plastic on it. You can also see from here, uh, there's the satellite dish that Trailblazer himself has. Now, if I move these out of the way and move him forward, I can show you where exactly where this connects. If you go ahead and pull this out, you can see it's kind of angled up a little bit. That seems to be kind of normal. I haven't found a way to get that to lay flat. And even in the instructions, it shows it angled up a little bit. So I'm just assuming that that's just kind of by design. That's the best they can make it work. But you can pop that out just like that. And it actually fits right in this slot here. Right there. So that's pretty much it for him as far as like, you know, the outer part of him. Uh, now I have kind of gone through his transformation. You can kind of see I've got a little bit of a seam here where I didn't get him quite back together exactly right. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to walk through his transformation. Okay, so now that I've gotten everything out of the way from showing you the accessories and gotten the cell addition all that removed, let's go ahead and go through the transformation here. This one's not that hard. It's a little tricky to get started just because everything's so tightly compacted. So the first thing you want to do is you kind of want to turn into where you can kind of see this. And this little piece here is the first thing that's got to go. So you kind of have to work your fingers on either side here and push in a little bit on the bottom. And it's a little hard to show. Like I said, he's very stiff. There we go. And you can see that kind of pops up. That's the first piece to kind of loosening things up on this figure. That has to move up. And it's a bit of a bear. So you're going to have to be, you're going to have to work it from either side here and you're going to have to work it from underneath here. Um, I recommend either getting something flat um, or just have a good long nail in order to be able to work with it because it's kind of tricky. Uh, the next part is to kind of work these loose and these you just kind of work up and you work them out a little bit and they pop up like that. This mirror will come with it and that just folds up like that. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side just to kind of get that loose like that. Okay, so now that this is kind of up and out of the way. Um, we can start working on the legs, which are right here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to bend here because that separates the legs. And then we're going to split here. If I can do this on camera. Ah, to separate them a little bit more. And then these just kind of rotate outward. Well, once you get everything kind of separated, all right? Probably want to go ahead and take this and push this out just to make your life easier. That'll flip out like that. You do have to force it a little bit. Let me show it again on this one. That kind of gets moved like that. And this just gets worked loose. Until it works its way out. I'm not sure why it's hung there. Man, okay. All right. So that's got to come loose from that and from back here. And that'll kind of loosen these pieces up, right? And then you should be able to get these out. And this is where a good chunk of the more difficult part of the transformation comes from. Um, once you start to get them loose, these are kind of in here really deep. You can see down in there that piece has to come up. And it's a little tricky. Oftentimes I have to either kind of flex it like that, which allows you to get it up, or you can use something kind of flat to kind of get underneath there. But that has to come up. And then from here, you can kind of just flip this over to the side like that. And here's the foot. You can just flip that like that. And then in here, 
what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to fold this down in like that and you want to fold this down and in and that will go right in there like that and then what you want to do is since this is kind of out like this you kind of want to work it until it's nice and closed like that and then the last thing you want to do is you want to take this and this needs to fold like that and then that goes over and that just fits right in there and that is one of the feet done just like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing on the other side we're gonna go ahead and move this out like this and then we're gonna kind of work this a little out a little bit and up you can work it without having to actually use anything on it it's a little tight do that see this piece here that just folds over to here right and then this piece will fold down like it did before get this leg out of the way whoop nope bad camera okay that'll go down like that and that'll just go down and then like that and then you want to work this flat like you did before and then this piece can just fold over and get pushed right in like that and then the foot doesn't matter when you do that as long as you get it done so at that point we've gotten both of his legs done that's pretty much how they're going to look when you're done that's actually one of the harder parts of the transformation if i'm honest I'm going to go ahead and move my camera a little bit so I have a little bit more working room. This part's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Oh, there is one last piece to this. This part right here has to flip down. So you move that and flip that down like that. Okay. And then from here, you can take these two. and work these loose. They're a little stiff, at least on mine. And then break here. Then I'll kind of break that seal. Make sure you do it on either side. It'll kind of loosen things up a little bit, give you a little bit more working room. And then this right here will come down and that'll come out. And while you're at it, go ahead and flip these in like that because you're going to need to do it later anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do the other side here. And grab this. Bring that down. Actually, you need to move this out of the way a little bit. That loose and bring the arm out and go ahead and bring the mirror down just to get it done and out of the way now the next part that i like to do on this oh my camera angle again as he gets taller i have to kind of keep adjusting things i like to go ahead and flip these in because that's where they've got to go anyway actually these parts pop out like that and then this part goes in like that and that's mostly just to get rid of some kibble on my part so this actually has to go down now these two actually go down like this that gets moved back and that gets moved back the chest piece comes down like this and the wheels just get pushed in a little bit they don't go all the way in but they do go in to where they kind of recede a little bit, if you can kind of see that, if I can get things lined up. Now the head is right in here. It's pretty traditional pull out and rotate, but what I like to do, I found this easier, my second time doing this, is to turn his head like that and push it through. I find it goes through much easier that way than trying to do a full 180 or to try to push it through like one way or another. 
that'll go like that. Then you can go ahead and bring these up like this. Like that, okay? So those are up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move this back. This goes in like this, and these come down and snap together. And then those kind of peg in here. There's little posts in here that kind of peg in here. Now they don't peg in great, but they do peg in. Probably gonna want this to go more down and then bring this down and just kind of snap that in like that. So that kind of comes in like that. Now we're pretty much, we're getting pretty close to done here. I know this video is a little janky. I'm kind of out of practice on these. But we're gonna go ahead and get the arms fixed because that's the biggest problem that you're gonna have right now is just the arms. You can see they look kind of janky and that's because they are kind of janky. Um, these rotate up and around like this. This rotates around like this. The fist comes out like that. And this part pulls out just like that. And then this piece comes out. That comes out like that. And that goes down. And that is one arm done. Now get the thumb out it's done. So this one right here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna rotate it around. We're gonna swing this down and pull this out. Then we're gonna get the hand worked out, rotate it, get the thumb, and then we're gonna bring this up and then rotate that out. Sink that down. And then get everything locked back in place because I'm really bad about getting this connected. If you already had this figure, this transformation will not be new. It's not really a new transformation. And you probably want to rotate these around and rotate the fist around. Just to make him a little better. And then I'm going to try to get this hooked. It's very difficult to do on camera, for the record. Um, mostly because it's just awkward working around the camera. And I know he looks a little hinky, but he is fully transformed. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back a little so you guys can see. So what we'll do at this point, since we've gotten him transformed, is we will go ahead and take a look at him in his bot mode and kind of go over all those sections for you guys. So hopefully this was a pretty easy transformation for you guys to follow. Um, I did my best to try to keep things in frame. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you found it informative um, as far as getting past any points where you were stuck because I know that's pretty much what I use transformations for. I usually never try to watch the whole thing. I try to watch just enough of it to get me past certain points and then I try to do it on my own because figuring it out is pretty much most of the fun. Now, if you are having a hard time, um, this is not bad. The manual on these have gotten really good. Um, they're really good about putting not only Chinese in here, but English. And I actually use that a lot of that just to get used to the transformation um, so that I could make it through it on the first go without too much of a trouble and without worrying about actually breaking anything. But this manual is actually very, very good. So I do recommend using this if you're running any problems and try this first and then move forward to other videos if you're just not figuring out how to get things loosened appropriately with the way they're recommending. That way you don't break anything. But let's go ahead and get started on his robot mode and um, stick with me. So guys, here he is transformed. He's actually got a pretty good bot mode um, from what I can see. Everything's got pretty good lines. Most of He's got a lot of die cast in him, first off. And most of that is right here in the legs, which gives him a lot of stability, which is great. Uh, another thing is you can see his hands are pretty beefy. His arms are pretty good. The transformation on those is actually kind of interesting um, as you probably saw in the video on it. 
Um, a couple of interesting parts that work here is this head will just kind of pop off and then the alternate head comes in. Um, the log, the stump, and things like that, uh, those are for Spike to sit on and have a picnic with him. Those figures are sold separately. There's also apparently a backpack, a jet backpack that's sold that's also sold separately. There's another kind of gun that's sold with Ironhide. Um, they've got all sorts of accessories that seem to cross between this line that are kind of interesting. Um, two of the ones that he actually has of note that I've got on him right now is one, this extra blaster, which if you've seen the cartoon, you know what that is. And then this piece right here, which is attached right here, which is for the magnetic ray that's supposed to give you that array effect on it. How that part attaches to his hand here is the physical hand just pops right off. So you can put it on either hand and then it just slides right on onto that peg. Now there's another accessory that goes with this too that I haven't put on there yet uh, that I may do here in a little bit is you can see this right here. That just kind of goes on him there and then there's another piece here. Uh, let me get it out here. I'm a little ill-prepared. And this plastic is kind of junky. And this will just snap onto here. Like that. And it gives him this wild kind of tri-blaster thing. Which is kind of cool looking. That can attach to the arm as well. So that's pretty much it for his accessories. So that's pretty much him in a nutshell. I think he's a really good looking ex-Transmox figure. They're actually starting to become one of my go-tos for Transformers for third parties because most of their stuff is really rock solid and stable. The transformation isn't overly complicated, but it definitely looks and feels like a masterpiece quality figure. And that's what I'm looking for when I go for these things. I want the aesthetic that I want from it, maybe at Gen 1, Beast Wars, whatever. I want it to have a good solid weight to it, and I want it to feel well constructed. I like something that's going to break the very second I play with it. Um, and I want it to have a good intuitive transformation that has enough complexity it's going to keep me busy, but it's not going to be so complicated that I feel like I'm going to break the thing every time I touch it. Um, this really doesn't have any problems with that. There were a couple times I had to kind of take a pocket knife or something kind of flat to work a couple pieces loose that you probably saw in the transformation as well. Um, it wasn't too big of a deal. I didn't feel like it was going to break anything during those, but it did turn out to uh, really put the whole thing together pretty well. Uh, let me go and turn him around to the back so you can actually see more from the back of the figure on it, whatever kibble you'd be looking at. And as you can see, it's pretty clean. Um, when you're actually looking at him here, the backpack doesn't attach as great as I would like, but you can see they did a really good job of trying to keep most of the lines clean and trying to keep everything looking nice. I'm a, There he goes. Okay. I was afraid he was going to not have enough balance there. But you can see here, all this kind of comes together really clean. He's got a couple of knee joints here. He's got a little bit of mobility. Um, if I pick him up and move him a little closer. That's where his knee is. It's a little high. He has a little range of motion like here um, as well. So that gives him a pretty good range of motion on it. His arms will do the normal, like they'll fan, they won't really fan out very well, but they do rotate all the way around for the most part. They, that's hanging up there. Oh my goodness, I did not get him pegged together at all. My apologies, guys. Um, as you can see, <laughs> mine didn't go together exactly as planned. Uh, the arms kind of rotate like that, and then they rotate up like that. They don't quite do a 360. They do ratchet out pretty well. That's pretty good. Um, he's got good head motion here, kind of back and forth. Um, you can take it all the way around if you want to. I don't know why you'd want to. Uh, hit motion out is pretty severe, so you can actually kind of kick all the way to the side. So that pretty much covers him as far as his bot mode goes. Uh, overall, I think he's pretty great. I'm pretty happy to have him in my collection overall. Um, I think he's a really slick looking figure. I think he's well put together and well thought out. And, uh... I recommend you pick him up if you can get him, if you don't already have a model of it. If you like these colors a little bit better, then feel free to double dip. I don't know that I would double dip in the line if I already had one, however. But since I didn't and I'd been looking at him for a while, he was kind of right up my alley. Hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, stay tuned for the next one.
Till then, I'm out.